All right, everybody. Hi again. Uh, I thought I would do a little video uh, today about a question that William asked on the uh, Facebook page uh, on how it was possible to do uh, this kind of effect here where we have the uh, box that is on top of the other one on the, on the other in this case. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quickly. Uh, just a little note here in this particular case this old box here containing the text and so on this is just one big image which is not really a good idea by the way so uh, this is now how, not how i did it i did it uh, with text now let's in fact see how it, uh, i did it so this is how my page looks so far of course built with uh, pro styler and let's see how it was done in pro styler so I have just one page, of course, with a blank template. And uh, I have a two-row page here. So the first has two columns divided in 50% each. First one is empty. Second one is just an editing element. So that's pretty simple. Uh, just some padding on top and bottom of it to put some more space. The left column was a little bit harder to do. Since I don't have the option of changing the background color, I could do so with the heading and then with the paragraph and then make sure there's no space to don't have any uh, white space and so on. What I decided to do instead was to create an entire new page and simply embed the, embed the page here. So we're going to take a look at that page in a couple of seconds. And the next column was simply a text here, which is uh, my text. I could have used a heading probably here. And a tree list element. Okay. So that's the basic elements. Now let's go with the page. One new feature, I think it was done with the latest update of a Pro Styler, is we have a link here to open that page here in a new window if we want to edit further. So let's see how that page was built. So this is just another two row, one column element because it's going to be embedded in the left uh, column of the other. Again, at adding just my regular text here, but the difference is that now this uh, row can have a background color, as you can see. So everything has been centered here and we can have a background color there. Could put some spacing. And I've put more spacing, by the way, on the title than on the paragraph itself, in the element itself, the editor itself. And underneath, I've put another column and simply used the image. I did the screen capture of the logo of the other page. And of course, it was centered. So that's how easy it was to create this one. And of course, again, I simply embedded it in this page here on the left side. So this is how it was built. Now, one other thing that we need to do, I forgot to remove it, but it's it's already there. So in my page embed here, I came in the uh, styling section and I created an ID. So you don't have to do it if you just do the first part of the, the this video, what I'm going to show you in a few seconds. But if you want to do the second part, you will need to have that ID. So let's remove this for now just to show you that we don't necessarily need it to do the first section so the only thing that I need to do here is come to my page uh, embed here and in the uh, styling section I'm going to go and use a margin top a negative margin top there are two ways to do that by the way I could use a position relative and then a negative top uh, value that's our, what I often do but we don't have this option directly in Pro Styler, so I'm going to go with the Pro Styler option of putting a negative margin here. By the way, people still have this question sometimes. You cannot have a negative padding, but you can have a negative margin. Okay, so with some testing, I came up with the negative 75 pixel here. Value would be good for that particular page. I'm going to save that and simply refresh and voila everything's done perfectly fine pretty simple to do uh, just one thing though that sometimes we don't think about so it's pretty good here but if I'm on a mobile device then it might not be as good because of course 
the negative margin still applies and it will be on top of the other content okay so this is where the second part of the video begins where you will need to have an ID and use my favorite tool for styling which is micro teamer in this particular case to be able to uh, specify something just for the uh, desktop and just for mobiles for example so uh, let's go back to pro styler and this is where I'm gonna add my ID on my page embed I'm gonna go in styling section and put a ID. Why? Because of course IDs are uh, automatically generated by ProStyler but the problem is that each time we refresh the page the ID change if we uh, leave the uh, default custom ID. So I'm going to put an ID myself. Again just a quick recap. CSS class is when you want to use that multiple time on the page. If you really want to use it just once I prefer to use ID because this is more powerful, let's say it like that, than a class. But of course, if you want to use that multiple times on a page, you cannot use an ID, you need to use a class. Okay, so left call really needs to be case sensitive and so on, so you really need to specify the right way. I'm going to save that, save my page again. And I'm going to go here and use MicroTeamer. So MicroTeamer is a little plugin that I really like. There's a free version, the light version allows you to go up to 15 uh, modification, 15 selector, the real term, um, which will probably be enough for most of you since ProStyler already has a lot of uh, styling options embedded. Of course, I personally like to buy it because that's really cheap and it's a way of encouraging the developer. It's so cheap and it's a lifetime license, so I really encourage you to buy it. But anyway, the light version will probably do in this particular case. I'm going to click on Micro Themer here. You won't have all those tabs by default. That's just because I have did other several training on ProStyler. So those of you who have followed my training, you know uh, why it's like that. So only, the only thing I need to do is come here and double click the element that I want and it might not select what I actually want. As you can see it highlights what I have double clicked and it's not the entire left column here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in my inspector tab here and move up until I see my left call. So as you can see here, it's still not there. And here you see ID left call and the entire column is selected. So this is the right one. So I'm going to go back to my targeting tab and you have a bunch of choices here. So it's really up to you. But this ID here, like I mentioned, is a custom ID of the row. So it will change over time. So don't recommend kind of a strange character like that. So I'm going to go directly with my left column. As you can see, still selects just this one. When you mouse over something, sometimes you will see that it selects more. So in this particular case, this one will be all right. I need to give it a name. That's just a comment in the CSS. So this is just for you. You can use any character that you want. So I'm going to say left call. And you have a bunch of predefined folder here. You can create your own. You just need to type the name. In this particular case, I'm going to put it in the content folder since that's just the con regular content of the page. I could use sidebar, by the way, if it will re really be a sidebar. But in this case, not necessarily. That's just a column for the own page. And I click Create Selector. Now, it's already all right on my desktop and the big screen like you can see here. So I won't go inside all devices. As you can see in large desktop, it's still all right. Desktop and tablet, well, it's really up to you. I find it a little bit narrow, but still two columns. So I'm going to leave it like that. When I go to tablet and phone, now you can see that it comes to one column. Same thing for phone. So I'm going to go inside tablet and phone and I'm going to get rid of the margin that I've put previously in ProStyler. So the way to do that, I'm going to go here to padding and margin. And you can see that I have a negative margin applied. When it's grayed dim like that, it means that it inherits it from somewhere else. So I can always override that value by clicking here and putting a zero. Now as you can see, it refreshes and everything is all right. So if I go to phone, it inherits the tablet and phone one. So everything still good. So I'm going to exit to my side front end to see if everything is all right. I'm going to test that into my 
Chrome browser and as you can see if I do my iPhone 5 emulator everything is still alright so MicroTimer is a great tool to edit CSS and that allows you to also target specific device or specific screen sizes I should say so uh, with the combination of ProStyler and MicroTimer you can achieve what William asked but also uh, prevent uh, problems from happening on mobile devices so thank you